Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Amen. Welcome to our worship service this morning. For those of you visiting with us, perhaps the first time, my name is Pastor David Robbins. Welcome to St. Paul's. We're glad to see you here on this wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, I hear it's supposed to be warmer this week. Pretty excited about it. It's 40 on Tuesday, if I remember right. Uh, be nice to shovel the driveway. That'll be a good thing. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get started here. Uh, first of all, we had a voters meeting last week, probably in our service, and a whole bunch of stuff was talked about. There's a brief summary of that in your service folder, the announcements. Go ahead and take a look at that. If you have any questions, I would be happy to talk to you about it, or you could talk to Adam Ulbricht. Um, he was running the meeting. Um, he'd be happy to answer your questions about that, too. A couple of highlights. Um, the church approved the purchase of a new live stream setup, um, especially for you folks online. That'll be a benefit. Um, that'll be here in a couple weeks. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we also found out about a, a new raffle that our church is going to be doing. If you have questions about the raffle, you can talk to Ashley. Ashley, raise your hand. Uh, she has tickets that she's selling, and you can buy tickets from her to talk to Ashley about the raffle also, coming up here. Also, if you want to sell tickets for the raffle, I can help you with that too. Great. So talk to Ashley if you have any questions about that. Um, the youth group is doing a bunch of stuff, so we have an update from the youth group. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so for the Valentine dinner, we have added a, uh, a ticket option. We are not offering carryout. So for some of you people, if you're like, oh, Valentine dinner sounds great, and it's going to be super yummy, but we can't really commit to the time frame, you can come in and even just pick up a meal for the evening if you would like to. But so the youth will be selling the tickets once we get to the back of church, after church. Um, please come by some, and if you know of anybody in the community, they have them sell Tuesday. Uh, so spread the word if you have the opportunity to do that. And then one last thing, not be related. Um, at the meeting on Saturday, Sunday, last Sunday, whatever. Okay, my mind's gone. Um, we're going to be hosting a board game night, and it's going to be starting in February, and it's going to be the last Friday of every month. Um, so yeah, if you would like to come and play board games, even if it's, I don't know, maybe just that. Even if it's Knuckle or Cribbage, great. We also have got some super, uber, like, intense board gamers. So, yeah. Oh, and it's going to start at 6.30. Great. And for those of you online who didn't hear that, um, the youth group is going to be having their annual reoccurring now, bringing back Sweetheart Dinner. You can buy tickets for that. Um, there's also a takeout option, which is new this week. Those tickets are due to be purchased no later than Tuesday, so they can have supplies for the dinner this coming week. And then there's going to be a board game night starting the last Friday of this month, whatever that number is, um, here at the church. Great. Two more announcements. Um, this is a couple of prayer requests. Um, so in our prayers today, uh, we're going to be remembering two particular people. Uh, we're going to be remembering um, Jerry Musberger. Um, Jerry's undergoing some eye surgery to restore his sight, and so we pray that goes well so we can see again. We're very excited about that. And then we're going to keep Damien Grossman in our prayers. Um, Damien's had a lot of ups and downs recently, and so please keep the Grossman family and Damien um, in your prayers as well. And then lastly, last announcement today, I will be out of the office on Tuesday. Um, we're going down to St. Cloud. We're going to find out if we're having a boy or a girl, and so we're pretty excited about that. We'll announce later when we find out what it is um, as well. That's all the announcements that we're having um, today, anyway. Our service today is based off of our, our gospel reading uh, from the book of Luke. And this is the famous story of Jesus going and calling his first disciples and making them fishers of men. And we'll talk about that this morning as well. We'll follow our service as it's printed. We'll start by singing our first number 805. I pray the Lord's blessing on your worship today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this, your confession, I by my virtue, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro today is taken from Psalm 71, and we read it responsibly. O God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God I will come, and will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come.
keep your family of the church continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Your test for reading for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany comes from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year the king Uzziah died, he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood a seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Since you are eager for a manifestation of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What, what am I to do? I pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will say praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in a position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise to the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And when he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little bit from the land. And he sat down on the boat and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come to help them, and they came and filled both boats, that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down on Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And also there were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. 
And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for a message just for them. Yeah, come on up. Lots of room. How's everyone doing today? Good. You guys are doing good. Yeah, come on up. Have a seat. Welcome, welcome. Do you guys know what an angel is? Yes. Yeah. Anyone? What's an angel? It's like a human that works for God. Yeah, and it has wings too. And it has wings too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, they, do, they do have wings. So today in our first reading, uh, which Mr. Kevin read for us this morning, it talks about a guy named Isaiah. Isaiah, he was a prophet. So a prophet is somebody very special who gets to talk to God, and God talks back to them in a voice that they can hear. And one day, God took Isaiah, and he got a sneak peek of what heaven is going to be like. So he took him up into heaven, and he got to see angels. Let me tell you, let me tell what the angels look like. This, this is what it says. Let me read it to you. And so there stood the angels. Each of them had six wings. Six wings. They had two wings that covered their faces. So I don't know how big those wings would have been little wings cover their faces they had uh, they had two wings that covered their feet two wings that covered their feet and then they had it says two wings they flew around the temple and so here this Isaiah gets to go up in heaven he gets to see God and he gets to see these angels and they have six wings all around them yeah I don't know it's kind of a maybe uh, for sure over their feet and their hands and their other hands their faces it's kind of an interesting thing I wonder how they saw it. But Isaiah is there, and he sees all of this. He sees all of the angels flying around, and he sees God there on the throne. And he he's gets to be scared because he's a sinful person, and it's not it's not always a good thing to be in front of God if you're sinful. And so he says, "Oh no, what am I going to do?" And God says, "Here, I'm going to forgive your sins. I'm going to atone for your sins, forgive you, that way you can be with I am. You can be where I am. Who forgives us our sins? Who forgives us? Jesus. That's right. Jesus came to forgive us our sins. So one day we get to be with God." We'll get to see him, and we'll get to see these really cool angels too. So let's pray now, and let's thank God for forgiving us our sins. Let's do that now. I'll say the words, you guys pray them, and the congregation will join you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys. You can go back to your seats, and we'll continue singing our next hymn.
Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who loved you with his very life. Amen. So have you ever met somebody famous, like an actor or a professional athlete or a little politician, something like that? Have you ever met somebody famous? And if you have, was that particular famous person, you know, famous to you? Because it's a thing, sometimes you can bump into a famous person and, and not know about it, like you're going through the airport and you later hear that this famous person also is through the airport on the same plane, you said, you just had no idea. But other times, other times you meet someone famous and that person is like, is like a hero to you. I remember when I was young, just a, just a little guy, well, young guy anyway, uh, my, my grandfather invited me to a church men's retreat at his church just outside of Milwaukee. And I went there and there was this, this guest speaker was there as part of this, this men's retreat and he was none other than legendary Green Bay Packers player, Reggie White. Uh, Reggie White being, of course, this, this lineman from, from a while ago. Even as a Vikings fan, you can agree that Reggie White was a good player. Anyway, so I really met this, this famous guy, and it was, it was kind of a weird experience, right? Seeing this man that I saw on TV, this, this, this football player who my classmates, my second grade classmates, built a snowman of as we were reconstructing the Super Bowl winning team, uh, build this snowman. It was just kind of a surreal experience to meet this snowman there in, in real life. And I got to also spend time with other um, Packer players too, but they're just less famous here in Minnesota than in Wisconsin. But if you've ever met somebody famous before, or even if you haven't, I want you to pretend what it would be like. Just picture somebody famous and trying to meet them for the first time. And then I want you to keep pretending and pretend for a moment that you're in our text today taken from the Gospel of Luke. That you are one of Jesus' disciples before they were called to be Jesus' disciples. The setting of our story today from Luke is a very truly quite idyllic setting. Um, it says the Lake of Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, and it's absolutely a beautiful place to be, um, if not the most favorable place on earth to be. It is always warm, it's Mediterranean, it almost never rains, the fresh fruit's amazing. And you live there on the coast of this crystal clear lake near the foothills of the mountains. And you, again, pretending to be one of Jesus' disciples before they were disciples, you're living there in a small village, just trying to live your quiet life. Every day you wake up and you go to work, and you get up and get ready for the day to head down to the shore to greet your business partners and best friends, um, and you own your own boats together, and so you get in, you go off, and your whole day is spent fishing in this world of perfect climate. And you're fishing um, for what today is called St. Peter's fish. It's tilapia there in the lake. So you get up, you take your catch, and then you head to the market for the day. Fresh fish for your local community and surrounding villages. It's not nothing to get wealthy on, but it's honest work, and it provides for you and your family. Some days, of course, better than others, but last night was a rough night. You were out fishing way past the sunsets. No fish. Empty nets time after time again. Not just no fish for you, but no fish for your partners in crime too. And now, the morning has come, and all that you have to show for all of your life of hard work is just dirty nets that need to be cleaned and repaired. No product to sell as you lose money on the time and maintenance of no fish. So there you are, sitting on your boat, in your boat, mending these nets, preparing the boat and supplies for hopefully a better day tomorrow. And as you're working there, sitting on the beach of this idyllic place, you start to see a crowd gather. Lots and lots of people. Man, you say to yourself, if only we had fish, we could totally sell out our whole stock today. But you don't have fish, and so you keep sewing your nets. And there seems to be that they're following, this crowd seems to be following somebody around. He must, he must be famous, a celebrity, somebody important. And the crowd is kind of pushing him there, corralling him towards the shore. He's about to step into the water, so he asks if you can step on your boat and put out a little bit. And you do. If you're happy to help this fellow out, it's not like you have a lot of work to do. And so you mend your nets there in your boat, 20 feet from shore. Not a big deal. Plus, hearing this guy speak will give you something to think about as you regret not having fish to sell to the crowd. 
kind of like how we, to, how we listen to podcasts today. And so this man starts to speak and he starts to teach. He speaks to the crowd for, for hours and you hear that he's a, he's a teacher, a, a pastor, maybe a priest of sorts. And he's talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about how God is sending his Messiah into the world to save the people from their sins. You'll hear him calling the people to repentance, to stop their sinning and to trust the good news that God is bringing salvation to his people. And after a while, um, after he's done talking, he says, all right guys, well, we're in the boat. You've already got the boat in the water. You wanna go fishing? And then our text says, uh, why don't you head out to deeper water and let down your nets? And you, after being up all night, after now listening to him teach, are exactly tired. You didn't make any money today, and in fact, you lost money today. You were up all night trying to catch fish, and you don't know what to do. Because there, in your boat, is this celebrity. And for some reason, you feel compelled to do what he has to say. Normally, normally we wouldn't go back out in the water, but for you, sir, you will push back out because you asked us to. So you head back out to deep water and you put the nets in. And as soon as the nets touch the water, they are absolutely full of fish. Now, my personal experience in fishing in Minnesota is one of very sketchiness, shall we say. Uh, I didn't catch a fish here the first four years that I lived in this state, not for lack of trying. I might try. <laughs> Uh, but then a gracious member took me out to his secret spot and I caught four fish, and it was great. I have now caught four fish in Minnesota. I can only imagine how many fish that you have to catch to sink, to sink, not one, but two commercial fishing boats. Fish aren't very big. Tilapia aren't very big. Our text says that the nests were so full they called the other folks to come out they picked the fish up and both boats started to sink. There were so many fish. And suddenly you realize that this celebrity that everybody wants to listen to, he's more than just a famous person. This guy is clearly a miracle worker. It's a lot of fish to make a boat sink. A prophet like that of John the Baptist who you heard about earlier, you look at yourself and you see that you're standing in, in what has to be the presence of someone famous, more than famous. This guy must be a prophet of some kind. Again, not a disciple yet. You don't know Jesus is God. And you have no business being where this guy is. You know you're not worthy to be in his presence. To meet a celebrity is, is one thing. It can be a joy or a letdown. As celebrities are just people trying to live their lives in peace. To meet a prophet, that's entirely different. Prophets talk to God in ways we don't understand, and God talks back to them in ways we don't understand, and they do things like make enough fish for boats to sink. To be in the presence is a big deal. And our text today, if you're not careful, you'll miss it. It talks about this. The disciples, soon to be disciples, are absolutely terrified about this catch of fish. In much the same way in our Old Testament lesson, when Isaiah is, is taken to heaven and he gets to see God with his own eyes and he starts to freak out. These humble, poor fishermen who are just trying to live their lives there on the shores of the Seas of Galilee are absolutely terrified meeting this prophet, meeting this Jesus. In our text today, Luke, Luke is, is telling us about Jesus calling his first disciple about these these men who give up everything, like they get to shore because their boats were sinking, because there's so many fish in them, and they leave it. They leave the boats, they leave the fish, because the guy who was in the boats is much more important. They trade in this um, immeasurable amount of, of money, they trade in this, this comfortable, idyllic, coastal life, they give it all up, for a nomadic life of difficulty, of following Jesus as he constantly moves from town to town to preach and to teach. They give up their lives of peace and quietness for a life of persecution and disruption. And this is how the text today starts. 
And in this detail, this is part about meeting the celebrity, about, about Jesus stepping into the boat. Peter then falls on his face at the knees of Jesus and says, depart from me, I'm a sinful person. Because Peter gets it, Simon, I suppose. That he knows that this person is, is very, very good, and, and he isn't. Jesus is perfect, and we are sinful. We're unclean, we're selfish, even, we're even enemies of God, what God wants us to do. And so Peter sees who's standing before him and, and begs for his life and says, please, away from me, I'm not worthy to be here. I, I'm sick, not with leprosy, but with, but with sin. And Jesus, this prophet, this great celebrity and our God, says to him, you want to go fishing? It's as if he said, I, I, I didn't come here to, to be served. I, I came here to help. I didn't come here because this idyllic setting is so worthy of me. I came here because you're unworthy, and I want to give you worth. I didn't come here because you're perfect and clean. I came here to forgive you, to restore you, to cleanse you. Just like in Isaiah today, he was cleansed, so you will be, not by an angel, but by the Son of God. Let's go fishing. I have forgiveness. I have life and salvation. I have the gospel to give to all of those who follow me. So let's go catch some fish. And by fish, I mean men. Let's go catch people and, and tell them everything that I do for them my love and forgiveness of a God who brings in so many fish. And today, you and I are in that boat. We're part of this miraculous catch to our boat is sinking it so full. We, we men, we people, along with all Christians across this earth, are a number of fish more than counting, a truly miraculous catch. Because Jesus, our celebrity, is more than a celebrity. He is our God who gives up his life in our place. And so while you may or may not have met somebody famous, and I've heard it can be disappointing to meet somebody famous, but I, I can assure you this. One day, you're going to meet Jesus. One day, the catch will be brought home. One day, we'll meet our great celebrity and even our great Savior, and we're not going to be disappointed. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues with our offertory. Please rise. pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, the God of angels, build up your church and manifest your spirit among us with wisdom and knowledge. Let our words be measured and intelligible to our fellow Christians and to those outside your church. We may utter our amens in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Heavenly Father, sustain those to be called fishers of men in Christ's church. They would not be discouraged when they toil all night and take in nothing, but continue to let down their nets at his word according to their callings. Lord, in your mercy, grant us, O Holy Spirit, we might be mature in our thinking and infants in evil. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of the church, bless all Christian homes that your word would be sown and produce much fruit. Lord, in your mercy, O Holy Spirit, give us faith to let down the nets of your word in our daily vocations, and trust your Son to do his gracious work through poor sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
O oh God, be not far from us, if you have worked deeds of salvation in Christ Jesus. So make haste to help us now in every trouble. Give healing to those who are sick, strength to the weak, and comfort to the afflicted, especially for Damien and Jerry, for those on the prayers of this congregation, those who before you in our hearts. Do not forsake us for the generations yet to come. Lord, in your mercy. Send to us from your altar, O Lord, the body and blood of Christ. Cleanse us in our lips by this blessed sacrament, delivering the atoning Christ, the atonement which Christ has won for us. We may be worthy to stand before you now, even in the last day. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, never depart from us. Though we are unworthy of you and your bounty, you are pleased to receive our meager thanks for reluctant obedience, for the sake of Christ's perfect obedience. Let your word rule in us and your spirit revive us to leave behind pride and anxiety. We might follow you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. For those of you worshiping online, we thank you for being here. The Lord bless and preserve your company going from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. For those of us in the section,